Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Very good evening, Mr. Vijay. Very good evening. How are you? So there are a couple of people uh, who are watching us and uh, I can see. So uh, all those who are there with us today, can can I request them to please uh, type a hello or uh, mark their presence. Very good evening, Chetan. Very good evening. Please uh, mark your presence. Hello, Mr. Satyam. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to express a heartfelt thanks to everybody that, you know, you guys managed to um, attend and, uh, you know, made your presence here. And uh, very good afternoon to everybody, Ms. Reem, Halima, Shabana. Thank you so much. And after this uh, uh, webinar, you'll all be, uh, you know, uh, given the uh, certificates and... Uh, please focus on uh, the discussion which is going on. And uh, uh, if you would like to continue with something, so please make sure that, you know, you do it. So let us begin and uh, let us see that uh, what's there in store today for today's webinar. So as you all know that, you know, you have uh, uh, systematic literature review and meta-analysis uh, for store today. And we at Research Graduate, we always try to deliver the uh, content which is uh, which is in uh, demand, as in which is in uh, need by all you scholars, all you researchers. So when we talk about Research Graduate, so basically we operate as a consultant firm, wherein our motto is to help the scholars all around the world. And the kind of help you guys can expect us to do from you or the kind of support you can expect us to extend to you is, you know, we start uh, from the very basic that is your, uh, we can help you in your topic selection, we can help you in your, uh, you know, thesis writing and uh, whatever uh, information you would like to get on uh, research paper writing, review paper writing, your editing, your statistical analysis, everything can be taken care by us, okay? So uh, just be rest assured that whatever your research needs are, we are there for you. And if you'd like to contact us, so uh, the following details which are displaying on your screen, kindly, you know, make a note of them. And you can also visit our website. And this is the email ID on which you can reach us out. All right. So the format is like first, I'll be delivering a webinar uh, is in terms of a presentation. And then we'll be taking uh, your question answers. The PPTs, the recording and the certificates will be there on your registered email ID with which you must have been registered with. So... Let's start. Okay. So before we, you know, we gorge on onto the topic exactly, can anybody tell me or can, can anybody, uh, you know, uh, share their understanding about what is systematic literature review? Can anybody tell me what is systematic literature review? Any, anybody who would like to, you know, type in the chat, uh, please uh, feel free to do so. And uh, uh, whatever your understanding is about uh, 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 subject of systematic literature review. Can anybody tell me? Yes. Understanding of previous work on the similar topic. Right. Absolutely right. Okay. Okay. Anything else? So, you know, we are very close. Um, Mr. Vikas has said our type of review that use repeatable analytical method to collect secondary data analysis. Um, see, I would like to give a, a slight... Uh, you know, understanding about it, literature review, that systematic literature review. See, the name itself suggests a lot. In this webinar, we will try to cover this topic in a very easy manner. We will not go in a rocket science manner or where things are getting complicated. No, 
okay yes halima yes everybody uh, yes uh, you know you're right that collection of previous topics that we are doing however this collection of previous topic how does it differs you know from um, from uh, you know the other um, traditional literature review okay how it is different from uh, edition, uh, you know uh, traditional re review which we otherwise do in our in our um, uh, literature uh, uh, part section of our thesis of our paper uh, yes uh, mr benali synthesis of previous article where a summary is written based on yes yeah right see yeah partially you all are right partially you are i'm glad that you all are uh, you know able to touch the core however what you can see on your screen is system uh, the agenda what we'll be covering in the session today let me take you to the systematic literature review what it is so as i said that all of you have you know are very close to the arena of uh, a systematic literature review however when we say what exactly is see basically whenever whenever we are collecting the data whenever we are collecting the as you said previous uh, you know literature as you said previous available data we are collecting empirical evidences okay when we are collecting these empirical evidences on a specific criteria on a specific criteria let's say for example whenever we are conducting a systematic literature review we always keep research questions in our mind that what we would like to get from our uh, information or that literature we would like to uh, collect on so it's not like that we are hovering around uh, uh, anything we are hovering around or we are collecting a particular topic related to a particular research question you know we are trying to collect all the empirical evidences that are you know answering our research question so in systematic literature review you kind of start with a you know a very uh, predefined uh, uh, what do you call as uh, the research questions okay that's what that's why we say that it's a systematic literature review okay as i told you the name says it all whenever you are moving ahead with a review which is systematically conducted which is systematically uh, covered that is called a systematic literature rule and why we call it systematic reason being because we already have that what we want to look on now you'll say that we already have in our uh, you know other um, papers also which is or other literature review also which is otherwise not systematic no basically then we are more general in those kind of literature review okay so in those kind of review we come out of the research questions in the later side in the later stages however if you talk about the literature review which is systematically in nature we are primarily more focused on the predefined research questions predefined criteria these criteria can be your particular methodology your particular sample size your particular uh, data analysis technique and so on okay so if i would you know explain systematic review in a more uh, defined manner i would say that objectives are more clear in advance only as i told you you know there are more clear objectives which are already there plus you know you have a systematic search you know what kind of databases need i need to search or you know there are particular uh, data, uh, review um, uh, databases which serves the as the soria of the systematic literature review and also when you present systematic literature review there is a set pattern of the you know uh, what do you call as uh, the uh, presenting uh, systematic literature review right see when you are uh, trying to uh, uh, present your systematic literature review when you are trying to present a report or systematic literature review there is a set criteria see all those uh, who are 
uh, not able to see the uh, slides kindly you know uh, increase your video quality and in any which ways these slides will be there for you later so okay so kindly uh, focus on what i am saying or try to pay attention on the slides they are pretty much clear just probably you know there is some uh, video clarity issue probably at your end all right so few things till now we have got it very clear in regards to systematic literature review that we have set questions with us we have um, objective set objectives with us we have the specific criteria for which we need to look around the uh, previous studies okay so all these things we have in with us that's why it is called as a systematic literature review okay so what you can see here is you know if you can if you would like to go ahead with a, a systematic review you know you can you can go for a, a particular theories or particular themes or particular you know you, you go for the particular journals and then you go for the types of research you are looking for you you looking for a particular benefits you know so there is basically a set route for systematic literature review otherwise there must be many uh, many uh, uh, what do you say uh, scholars must be there here with us so they must be conducting or they must be uh, uh, there with the you know on the stages of uh, literature review so i'm sure that all of them when they are conducting literature review so they are at the end of the day they say that there is lot to read where to start what to do this issue or this concern slightly you know get chops when you go and do a systematic literature review reason being you start with a already defined criteria okay that's what you know makes a, a life of a scholar when doing systematic literature review relatively i would not say easy uh but in a directional way that you know that what you want to do okay now uh let's understand systematic literature review in a, a more precise manner so when we are saying a uh, systematic review so uh, basically it's again you know it's a review so it has to be a con uh, it has to be a, a comprehensive uh, report synthesized report in which you know that you know your method was already decided your uh, uh, research objectives was already decided okay and with the help of systematic review we also collate you know as i said that you know the empirical evidences we look for because we know that these are the predefined precept specified eligibility criteria for us these are the uh, research questions with us so we look for those empirical evidences which justifies our research questions okay so that our review can get less and less biased plus we get more reliable findings with us okay plus more reliable findings and uh, uh, more uh, emphasized finding more trustworthy less biased finding with us so in a nutshell you can understand that when we are talking about systematic literature review it is basically you know conceptualized it is basically synthesized according to a pre determined method and according to that according to our research objectives and our research questions we move on with the our uh, empirical evidences with our more predefined method okay so uh, in a in a in a one sentence if i want to concise systematic literature review it is more of a directional way of looking at the literature review you know where you want to go what you want to achieve or you know what you, with what methods you want to achieve so i in my opinion as a researcher it is a more of a precise manner of uh, conducting literature review okay now let's see some of the characteristics of <clears throat> literature review as you know i'm sure that all of you must have agreed that um Uh, it is a very um, defined kind of literature review so it has a clear title 
it, it's not like that, you know, understanding change management. No, we are talking about the, let's say, for example, understanding the factors influencing change management in uh, administrative staff. So we have a very clear objectives, which is defined. Um, you know, it is very explicit. We have inclusion or exclusion for our study, like what to include and what not to include. So inclusion criteria as those criteria which defines uh, what element would be included in literature review and what exclusion talks about what element is not, uh, you know, um, uh, to be included in the study. Okay. See, all of you don't worry, you will get the... Um, uh presentation don't worry about it okay all right so then uh, it, it is uh, next uh, characteristics is that it is basically a list of review which you have done in which your excluded studies the studies which are not being included those lists are also being there Otherwise, what happens is that when we are conducting literature review, we don't pay attention to something which is um, which is not of our use, which is not getting aligned with our title, or which is not getting aligned with our topic. So we don't keep we don't keep much attention to that. Okay. Now here in lit systematic literature review, we have that all uh, complete list of those studies which are not being part of our literature review, systematic literature review, which are being excluded. And why they have been excluded, that justification also being provided because, you know, they have not been fitted in our criteria and uh, they are not uh, justifying our uh, research objectives or they are not, in a nutshell, they are not getting aligned with our predefined uh, uh objectives and the uh, research questions okay now question comes why do we need systematic review so before i move ahead can anybody tell me that why do we need a systematic literature review can is there any uh, uh, opinion which you would like to share why do we need it Thank you, Reba. Thank you so much. Anybody would like to give me a reason that uh, what according to you that uh, we need to know that why we need uh, to get a global trend? Yes, to reduce the confusion. OK, OK. Go ahead. Go ahead. Very nice. Very nice. Very interactive audiences. That's what I like about uh, uh, people who share their whatever knowledge they have. See, it's not about right or wrong. It's about sharing yourself in such a platform where you are accessible to lot many people around the world. Okay. So let's start with that. Why do we need systematic reviews? First of all, um, there is a lot of literature available. Okay. Uh, a lot of information is available. So systematic reviews basically helps the researcher to come out with a very precise and a very defined decision. Okay, why precise and defined? Reason being because you have your objectives with you, yourself. You have your research questions with yourself that oh, what according to you, uh, uh, you know, what uh, what according to you, your predefined objective is, what is your research question is. Yes, right, right. So, there is large amount of literature. So it's like you can say that it's a very uh, precise approach to get on to a very informed kind of decision because you already have what you are supposed to look into. Okay. Now, then systematic reviews definitely they reduces your uh, biasness. See, it is more of a scientific method, right? Because there are certain protocols, certain uh, criteria on which you are uh, including the studies in the review. Not every study can be a part of systematic literature review, right? Not, uh, you know, every um, uh, piece of uh, research work can be a part of systematic literature review. Why? Because you have your eligibility criteria with yourselves. You have your predefined protocols with yourself that what to include what not to include okay then sample size or uh, the other characteristics 
according to which your studies qualifies to be a part of your systematic review okay then obviously we need systematic review because there are a lot of publications many publications which are at times very difficult for a scholar uh, to go ahead with our i would like to ask a question to all of you that uh, yes mr vikas to get a broad understanding and plus also you know like you let's you like you said in the last that um, you know you what research methods and theory are being used systematic review basically allows you to go ahead with the theories particular theories particular research methods and what kind of results they have obtained with you now the question is from my side to all of you is that uh, what do you think it is uh, preferable to go ahead with the traditional reviews which we are in a habit of doing or which we generally see around or systematic reviews what do you think that uh, uh, is more preferable I'm waiting, guys, for the question. See, all those who can't see the presentation, it's okay. Presentation is one part of the presentation is supposed to be heard. Tell me if I am not clear, okay? If presentation is not clear, don't worry. It will be there in your email soon after your uh, webinar is over. So it's okay, no problem. Okay, just listen me out. That's more important. My question was, what according to you scholars, um, uh, would you prefer to go for systematic review or literature review, traditional review? See, when the presentation is not clear, everybody is sending the comments in the chat section. When I'm asking a question, everybody is getting silent. Why? See, the, give me the reason. Give me the reason also that why, why? Okay, 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 okay. See, basically, when you conduct a systematic review, I think it's a more, uh, it's a most directional approach to a review because I remember the time when we were doing the, uh, uh, I was doing the literature review for my uh, thesis. It took a lot of time, but, but again, you know, when you talk about systematic review or the uh, traditional form of review, that depends upon what kind of work also you are doing because every topic can't fit into the systematic review setup. And uh, yes, definitely, Mr. Vijay, it provides the precise results. It gives you a more clear approach to your results. However, it depends upon that what kind of uh, studies you have undertaken in your, like uh, Ms. Ms. Girija said that, you know, scientific, you need to elaborate a little bit more what you want to say, Ms. Girija. So Mr. Dipankar says systematic reviews are better because it's more specific and exclusive. Absolutely. You know, they are more specific. They are more exclusive. However, again, I would like to say it depends upon that um, what kind of topic you have undertaken with your research. Okay. But yes, in any which way, systematic reviews are uh, more uh, targeted approach to your uh, review and definitely out of the lot which is available for uh, these scholars systematic reviews helps you to find out you know hand pick kind of what what i believe when i say about systematic review that it allows you to you know hand pick these studies that what is the best suitable uh, way to or what is the best suitable studies to be included in your or uh, work okay yes everybody somebody is saying it is more systematic again the name suggesting it all it is more precise absolutely okay now another set of reasons what we have that why we need systematic review that you know as i told you there are a lot many uh published material which is there or uh, a lot of information, a lot of uh, researches are going around in the world on so many topics. Again, one question, uh, uh, rather I should say the one concern I would uh, I would like to share as a researcher with all of you. How many of you are, uh, you know, finding it not, um, uh, you know, I would say that uh, frustrating. I would say that distress is the right word with so much of research work getting published, but very handful of the research work is of actually 
you know, research oriented. Is I am the one only facing who is facing such issue or concern or you guys are also, you know, on the same page that today research work publication has become a task in order to either gain some points or gaining some uh, promotional opportunities or it is a requirement for the uh, PhD or it is a requirement for your job and so on right so basically you know if you say that uh, uh, research work is so much so much so it becomes difficult Ariba your questions answer is right here that you know uh, probably you joined late systematic review it starts with a predefined criteria that what I'm supposed to do so when I say predefined criteria, so criteria are very specific in nature. They are very particular in nature. Unless otherwise traditional review, they are very general. Okay. Like, for example, I gave the example of change management. So I'm, I'm looking for the literature which is on change management in traditional review. However, if I have my research question with me, I have my criteria that only these studies will be included. Only these study, uh, studies based on uh, this particular methodology or this particular theory or this particular empirical evidences, they will be, a, I'm just giving an example, Mr. Sujit, they will be a part of systematic review. In traditional review, it is like, you know, you need to search that uh, from a lot, what can be a part of your uh, you know, uh, your literature review. So systematic review basically allows you to filter your studies on the basis of what you have shortlisted for yourself. Okay. However, in traditional review, you just move around, you just go around. All right. All right. So I, we were on why we need systematic review. We need systematic review because, uh, you know, it is somehow um, impractical. It is, uh, that's what I was saying, that there is a lot of uh, research is available around the world. Some researchers even don't know what they are writing. But uh, because it is a compulsion to get publications, it is a compulsion to get your papers presented in conference, just researchers are, you know, writing the paper. So out of all that uh, voluminous work which is available, on um, research platforms, it becomes really difficult for the researchers who are actually willing to give some qualitative work which will contribute to the existing knowledge, which will contribute to the existing literature. My question, my very frank question to all of you who are present on this platform, how many of you find that research paper writing, paper writing, irrespective it is review or research paper paper writing is a task task as in a work which we need to do so as to strengthen our cv so as to get more points so as to uh, get our um, publication list get longer and longer very frank question see nobody knows here on on this platform i just can read your name so i don't know anything about other than that so as your colleagues right miss priya right right so my question is if you think that uh, it's a piece of work it's a research writing is a is a work then you will not enjoy it and same way when i say systematic review why i gave an example of systematic review on this that you know there are a lot of research work available because in systematic review you get rid of all those researches you get rid of all those literature which is not of our use which is not going to contribute towards what you are going to study okay so to just to um, you know keep the researcher to move on on a predefined directional way of conducting literature review, systematic review is important, okay? Another reason is reliable summary of otherwise unmanageable mounts of evidence. Exactly. As I said that, you know, there are plethora of information available, plethora of evidences available. It's not possible to go ahead with all of them. Systematic review actually 
helps you to come up with a summary, come up with a concise and synthesized review, which is more of reliable in nature, which is which you guys can trust upon in a much better way or which is more based on facts, which is more based on, uh, uh, how, you know, carefully chosen uh, data extraction tools or research methodology strategies and so on. So, yes, you can say that it is more precise. Somebody has said that. So it is more uh, uh, targeted. It is more unified approach of conducting review. Okay. Next reason is decision makers require review of evidences available. Definitely. See why this reason is of, uh, you know, of particular use. Reason being because uh, when you are conducting, when you are conducting your research, uh, you are uh, delivering the results of the, uh, that research, research work either to get contributed in your uh, literature or there are some practical implications or managerial implications of that study. So can anybody tell me, with, before I move ahead, can anybody tell me what are managerial implications of a research study? What do you understand by managerial implications of a study? I will not move ahead till I don't get the answer. Because one reason is decision makers require review of evidence is available. From this, I have derived that, you know, it is your study is of uh, uh, managing, you know, uh, can be used for uh, or it has good managerial implications. No, Mr. Surjit, managerial implications are not plagiarism. It is not plagiarism. Yes, Mr. Milton, can you uh, can you elaborate a little bit or more what you said decision takes? Usage in works. Yes, Mr. Manoj. Can we make it more, um, you know? Okay, okay. Ms. Priya said proposed strategical model. Managerial implications, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Managerial implications, uh, probably, you know, they are those implications or they are those insights of your uh, of your research work, as rightly said by Mr. Manoj, that which can be used by the corporates or by the, you know, organizations, as said by Mr. Vijay Kumar as well, right? Decisions can be taken. The organizations, based on your research, the organizations can get the uh, insight for how to formulate new policies, how to amend the existing policies, or how to go ahead with any kind of change which is required in the workplace. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Ariba, not particular organization. Probably you can say that particular set of organizations or an industry. Okay, right. So manage, see, why I asked you this question? Because it's very important that how your research work, whatever you are conducting, is going to contribute either to the organizations or to the literature review. That existing piece of whatever literature you have, whatever information you have on that chosen topic which you are studying on, okay how your study is going to contribute in that literature what addition you are adding yes mr vikas now why i'm saying so every research has a research gap right if you are conducting a research you work on a research gap so if your research is carefully conducting that means you are fulfilling that gap you are filling that gap that means prior to your research some particular fact some particular information was not there in the literature which get available with the help of your research now since you have filled the gap which you have taken with which you have started your research work you have filled that gap that means 
you have contributed some new facts or some additional factor some piece of insight to the literature okay that's why one of the reasons for systematic review is that decision makers they get you know a proper insight they pre they get a clear approach on how to define their policies how to move ahead with any particular decisions to be taken in the future okay okay now before i move ahead tell me some something about traditional reviews now we have talked enough about uh, systematic reviews right can anybody tell me what is a uh, 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 traditional review oh sorry mr vikas <laughs> no there is mr vijay also actually there are mr vikas and mr vijay thank you mr isa i'm asking about traditional reviews don't ask me question narrative reviews or traditional reviews uh, uh tell me what do you understand by uh, traditional reviews right right not directional and uh, sub, uh, absolutely absolutely right that they are not uh, you know they are not uh, set or they are not conducted on a predefined criteria as what we have seen in systematic review like right mr imran work around many research papers on your field uh, mr imran actually we work around uh, research in many research paper in systematic review also however those research papers are selected on the basis of certain criteria okay certain criteria okay now let me take you and let me contribute what my understanding is towards uh, traditional reviews okay so when we talk about traditional review traditional review basically it gives you a broad overview like i started you know when i said that when i when i was talking about systematic review so traditional review gives you a broad approach there is no predefined methodological approach which you are following uh, information is just you know we are randomly collecting you know and please please be frank and be um, uh be open to us that when we collect our uh, uh, uh especially for our thesis when we collect literature review for our thesis this is the kind of review we do and it is not see i'm not judging that it is good or it is bad i'm saying that we just keep on collecting the information we just keep on collecting the information that uh, you know uh, yes miss priya right so that you know whatever comes on our way It basically in traditional review was we do, what we do is whatever comes in our way we just you know keep a look on it it's good bad just summary if it's related many scholars i have seen many scholars i have seen they just literally type the topic on google okay and whatever studies comes on the first page they just start reviewing reviewing as in just start glancing on them right exactly so basically you know that's what happened mr dipankar i you are absolutely right and that's what you know uh, we were just talking about the quality of the research work which is public publishing these days that how it is getting shaky so coming back to the traditional reviews that uh, we just we are just hovering around a very broad topic okay and the motive of the researcher is either to go uh, for a contextual manner or a theoretical point of view say that probably you know they are looking for a particular context to be explained or a particular uh, theoretical perspective of a particular topic okay so here you know uh, there is no predefined criteria traditional reviews they do not have a predefined criteria however if you focus on the this uh, section of the uh, slides that systematic review basically they overview the literature by having uh, the you know uh, predefined explicit criteria as methodological approach or they synthesize the results in a very concise manner when you are you know concising the results of uh, uh, systematic review they are also presented in a different way that also i will discuss that 
you know, uh, the way of presenting your systematic literature review is very different. Yeah. Coming back to Ms., uh, what Mr. Debankar has said, that sometimes we cite paper of our colleagues and seniors. Yes, yes, you know, because what we are doing is... Um, uh, Mr. Isa will be conducting it. We'll be we'll be talking about it in the later stage of the webinar. That many a times what happen is that you know the times are getting so uh, competitive in nature that uh, if you are writing a paper, please add my name, or if I'll write a paper, I'll add your name. So thereby, you know, uh, the count, the number of count of um, the paper will get increased. A couple of uh, days back, I was conducting a workshop. There a very frank question came to me from the audience that. Uh, is it good that me being from uh, finance that I uh, said my friend from who is writing an IT paper to add my name in that IT paper? The point is that if somebody asks you that you being a finance guy, you have written an IT paper, which is altogether not a genre of your or research domain, how will you justify it? So research writing it should not be just for the sake of that you know i need to write paper or i need to increase the number of coin it should not be like that okay now coming back to where we are that traditional review it's it's a very broad overview of a research topic however when we talk about its uh, way of progressing with the traditional review so they are morely you know they are more mainly looking for the literature more of from the contextual point of view or from the theoretical point of view okay now there is a difference for um, for all of you that which talks about that what is the um, difference between uh, systematic review and traditional review so uh, all this we have already discussed that you know uh, when we are writing traditional review there is no particular uh, 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 protocol is there that how you are supposed to write a systematic review there is no particular method of traditional review writing however when you talk about systematic review you always go for a, a you know already predefined recommended style of writing their protocol is always uh, uh, pre decided can anybody tell me what is a protocol in a systematic li literature review can anybody tell me i will not go ahead Yes, Mr. Dipankar, traditional reviews gives a, gives a very freedom to go for. Yes, Mr. Yes. Let me first answer Mr. Dipankar. See, uh, Mr. Dipankar, as I told you that we are not judging that traditional review is better or systematic review is better. As I told you, it depends upon the topic in your hand. Okay. So when you say that, um, uh, what is protocol? Like somebody has said, Mr. Milton has said set of conditions. Yes. See, when you talk about protocols in your systematic review, basically protocols defines your, uh, what is the rationale? What is the reason for your study? What are your hypothesis for your study? And what are your planned methods for your review? Okay, if you are moving ahead with your review, so, you know, uh, uh, what kind of hypothesis which you are with which you are moving ahead, because apart from that, you will not look for the extra studies or you will not look for extra uh, literature work, right, rightly said by Ms. Gereja, certain norms need to be followed, okay, and these protocols need to be prepared before you go ahead with your systematic literature review it's uh, it's very important to set these protocols or you can also in an easy language you can understand protocols as the guidelines those guidelines which will provide the direction to your systematic literature review now why do we need uh, these protocols basically these protocols, as I said, that systematic literature review is, uh, you know, is is more of systematic in nature. It is very much systematic in nature. How does this systematic nature comes in systematic literature review? Because of this, uh, you know, these protocols. Okay, these uh, predefined norms, as said by Ms. Kirija, these uh, details or the guidelines, how you are going to move ahead with your review, because in order to get more transparency in your review. 
okay like rightly said by ms ariba the objectives and the search question must be known well in advance absolutely 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 right yes see mr vikas it should start with a predefined uh, protocol systematic reviews always starts with a predefined protocol okay now when you talk about the difference between the systematic review and the uh, traditional review so the point is that uh, whatever you can see on your screen that you know how you're writing the uh, uh, report or you know systematic review that is different how you're writing the traditional review that is different there is no predefined order in traditional review which is there in the, the systematic review okay and uh, you know the way of conducting the way of conducting these reviews they are pretty much different there is no inclusion criteria particularly predefined criteria in uh, a traditional review or there is a set of um, uh, you know criteria which helps to define your uh, uh, studies which needs to be included in systematic review or not okay uh guys we will take a 5 minute short break here and just don't go here just grab a cup of coffee for yourself enjoy your sun, uh, saturday evening here okay yes mr vikas yes so we'll just take a quick 5 minute uh, uh, break and meanwhile you also please hold your coffee mugs with you and then let's enjoy rest of the session in sharp in 5 minutes okay i'll be back
All right, everyone, I am back and hopefully all of you are also there. So let's get back to what we were discussing. So we were on the differences between the traditional reviews and the uh, systematic reviews. OK, so I hope that, you know, till now you all must have got a clear idea that uh, 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 what is the main line of difference between um, systematic review and the traditional review. OK, now the question comes when we are saying that a traditional review is of such nature, a systematic review is of such nature and uh, which is better or uh, which is not. So this is a, a question which is of debate, right? Uh, Dr. Siddharth, you know, we'll be taking this question uh, in the later section of our webinar. So, uh, uh, you know, this is a debatable question that which is better. So as I said, in my opinion, it depends upon that what kind of topic is there in your hand. OK, now the question comes that when we are particularly topic talking about systematic reviews. So who are the ones who undertake systematic reviews? So mainly, you know, the economist, the clinicians, so mainly uh, systematic reviews are very much important for the people who are in healthcare services. OK, or, uh, you know, the, who are writing or who are delivering their research works on particularly in um, healthcare services having said that that does not mean that the other uh, uh, research um, research scholars or other researchers cannot undertake systematic reviews however you know who have more of uh, more uh, uh, the research work more of statistical in nature more more of statistical inclination is there systematic reviews works wonderful for them okay all right now, here are some, you know, so what you can see on your screen is here are some example for the databases where you can go for the uh, systematic reviews and, you know, they uh, they uh, make you access through the uh, um, uh, what do you say that already available uh, published literature, which is uh, there to help for the scholars which are going for the systematic review. OK. All right. Now, let me take you to the uh, uh, stages of systematic review. So when you are talking about uh, uh, systematic review, so uh, mainly what are the stages which are there for the systematic review? So let's begin. So first is, you know, when you are when you are beginning with the systematic review. So first thing what you do is your uh, planning the review. OK, the first stage is when you are planning the review that why do you want to do this okay now when you say why do you want to do this that explains your rationale okay when i said that you know you need to discuss some protocol so the, the developing that protocol stage begins in the very first stage so yes when you are beginning with your systematic review you need to have those protocols with you you need to have those predefined protocols with you okay so why do we need to do this okay and then what are your specific research questions which you would like to get answer from for your from your systematic review okay and then what will be your review protocol what will be your rationale your hypothesis your methods okay and then you move ahead so here till here you have not started the review you have not started doing it you have just set up a platform that now on i will be beginning with my review now the next main <clears throat> main stage goes conducting the review here you are actually looking for your research papers you are looking for the studies which will be a part of your review on the basis of your exclusion and inclusion criteria which i've already told you that you know what kind of study will be included there are certain criteria and what kind of studies will not be included there are certain criteria and then you extract the information out of that the data out of them okay so first is you set the platform for you by defining the protocols by defining your rationale by defining your research questions then you begin search for your right kind of literature or for your right kind of information that what kind of studies would be there uh, on the basis of the protocol, what kind of information I would like to take from those studies. And you start extracting the information from them. OK, then third comes the specifying the review. That means 
now you till this stage you have already done the review okay now you need to prepare the report and what comes in the report that also i'll tell you so preparing the stage for the systematic review how are we going to do this why are we going to do this what will be the uh, criteria for which kind of studies would be there now I would like to take your attention here that the first stage of planning the review that when we are trying to go ahead with the systematic review, when we are conducting a traditional review, no such predefined protocols are there. No such predefined research questions are there. So from the very first stage only, your systematic review gets a different direction from the traditional review. Okay. So when you are moving to second stage, you are conducting, you are studying the research studies papers and then you are extracting the useful information so not the entire paper you are you know you are extracting you are extracting the specific piece of data from that paper okay and then you are preparing a report out of it okay so here is the detailed uh, stage of your uh, stages in systematic reviews let's take one by one now first is your when you when you start formulating a research question like what are your study objectives what kind of uh, study designs you're looking for what are the, your what are the operational definitions like if you're looking for a particular definition of a concept or what kind of objective like for for example to, to study the influence of a particular vaccination on a treatment of a particular disease you know you're trying to identify the ratio of that or you're trying to identify the association of that so you are trying to identify the correlation between certain factors or certain variables in that so with such predefined objectives you begin with your study okay so you already have that thing in your mind then you develop the research protocol now as i already told you so when you are talking about the research protocol so you you talk about your rationale your objectives your definitions and then what will be the inclusion and exclusion criteria inclusion and exclusion criteria that again i told you that what will be included which all studies would be included which all study would not be included you know what is the data collection process which we are you know are we following the studies which collected the information by questionnaire or by observation based you know how they have uh, you know uh, they have uh, analyzed the data how they have collected the data how they have uh, put up a particular statistical process statistical analysis how it has been done so all these you know protocols that what kind of studies we are looking for we set this protocol well in advance okay now you start conducting the literature review so when you are conducting the literature if you see that you know that uh, you have electronic resources you have with yourself like um, databases and your um, uh, electronic libraries internet you have journals you have textbooks you have databases proceedings conference proceedings and research funders and all so when you are looking for the literature for for your uh, systematic review kindly use the synonym words like for example if i'm if i'm looking for purchasing behavior so i can go for consumer behavior okay i can go for buying behavior so i'm looking for the synonym of of um, purchasing with buying also okay now if i'm looking for effect of something so i can go for influence of something i can go for impact of something okay then use plural child if you are looking for a study particularly related to child then you can go for children also you can go for individual then people also you know start using the words like this and start uh, you know uh, using the words which are like and you know start connecting the um, words with like you know for example that like boolean operators when you say these and or not they are called as boolean operators so where you connect the words with the, uh, two or words together and then you start finding your literature okay so this is uh, this tip i would like to give to everybody that whenever you're looking for literature review you know otherwise also traditional reviews we are looking so try to enlarge your search by uh, analyzing uh, the literature with more and more connectors with more and more synonyms with more and more uh, 
what you called as these boolean uh, uh, words like and or so what happens is this with this your uh, research get wider okay now in your uh, uh, systematic reviews these uh, you know, search criteria, they also serve a very important perspective because you already have a very set criteria for your systematic review. If, you know, using these kind of synonyms or plurals, they helps you to come up with the similar studies which fits your protocols and the inclusion criteria. Then comes your select studies as per protocol. So you are done with the literature. You have the literature with you now you need to select out of them okay now here comes the real systematic review of the studies that whatever protocols you have uh, you know suggested or predefined for yourself so uh, you may want to regard uh, collect the information related to methodology or probably you know what is the population or what kind of population the researcher has chosen what is the population size researcher has chosen what are the inf interventions being con uh, you know being compared what are the outcomes of the studies so basically on the basis of these uh, uh, data what you are looking for on the basis of the protocols which you have decided for yourself you select these studies so not now here only the filtration starts here only the systematic review get its nature that you start filtering these studies you start taking out the ones which are of your use okay then appraise the study as per the protocol so basically you know you can go for uh, uh, you can prepare a checklist that uh, you know according to that these studies uh, fit for my criteria also you can go for the reviewer approach that you know you can uh, you can get in touch with the reviewer so that they can they can evaluate that what kind of um, uh, the articles what kind of papers which you have collected they are of quality nature or they are not so you can go for either for the reviewer approach or you can go for a checklist that whether these set uh, studies or the collected studies they fit in your criteria or not okay now now you have the handful of uh, what do you say that uh, the information with yourself okay now comes the uh, you know the climax part of the uh, systematic review that how to extract the data out of it now uh, what kind of data you would like to extract that depends or how much data that uh, you know you would like to extract that completely depends upon the discretion of uh, um, you know what do you say that uh, uh, the researcher uh, Yes, Miss Madhuri, thank you so much. Thank you so much for commenting. Thank you so much. Yes, systematic review answers a defined research question by summarizing all empirical results. That's absolutely right. Absolutely right. So when we are extracting the data, so basically, you know, you know, you can extract the data with the help of um, what kind of predefined criteria you have what kind of information you are looking for so basically you know extend uh, you know you need to extend uh, extract the data in a planned way okay in a planned way you need to depend that uh, how much data is sufficient for your studies how much data will justify your research objective with which you begin your uh, re review uh, with and most importantly that you need not to come up with some information which is not relevant for you or which is not relevant for your study okay so your planned analysis should get justified with the level of data you have extracted from the review from the papers which you have collected for yourself so extraction of data for that you need to be a very sharp smart researcher and please when you are extracting go back to your research questions go back to your objectives with which you begin reviewing or collecting the review papers okay 
then analyze results and interpret the results see when this question comes you know when you are to, when we you are uh, uh, looking for uh, a research um, or results analysis that depends upon that you know you you can analyze the data depends upon what kind of references the variations they have or, or what kind of um, limitations the various review have or what kind of uh, implications like I'm talking about all the studies which you have collected for your systematic review. So you can uh, analyze the results, you can analyze their um, work, or you can interpret their results on the basis of variations in their uh, uh, sample size, sample characteristics, what kind of findings all these uh, collected review has, what kind of uh, uh, implications, differences and implications of all these studies have. Okay, so let's say you are beginning up, beginning up with particular objective and uh, you have collected a handful of review papers on that research question or objective and you are begin with that. So how you will analyze the result that for that particular same research questions, what all are the research findings of the chosen review papers which fits the criteria for my uh, uh, protocol or which fits the criteria from my inclusion criteria and how these studies are different in each other how these studies have different implications from one another and how these studies have different different variations from each other okay now now coming to prisma flow diagrams before as i you know as i like to ask from all of you can anybody tell me what is uh, prisma flow diagram? Can anybody tell me? Uh, uh, Mr. Dipankar, if you are not able to find out any supplementary data in a research paper, then you go, you can go for, uh, you know, for some authenticated reports, probably from UN or uh, some authenticated source of uh, data, you can go for it. There are many uh, topics on which there there is a dearth of uh, literature available in published form of either journal or research papers in that case you can go for some authenticated reports which has been published by some major consultant groups or some other uh, websites but provide provided these reports are some uh, from some authenticated source you can go for that yeah my question was <clears throat> what is a prisma flow diagram Okay, let me take you there. What is a prisma flow diagram? Basically, when we talk about prisma flow diagram, basically it depicts the flow of information, you know, that how the information has traveled during different phases of systematic review. So as I told you that, uh, um, you know, in a systematic review, we have different stages, we have different phases. So uh, prisma flow diagram, it actually helps you that how much, review paper or the studies you have identified how much are included how much are excluded let's say for example you have collected 27 so 13 are included 14 are not why they are not okay right right miss priya they know it's a kind of a it's a absolute thank you miss maguri for giving the uh, expanded form i was just about to tell that it is uh, you know it is preferred reporting items for uh, systematic reviews and meta analysis so basically yes it is you know it it gives you a flow chart of that how the information has traveled for um, for your systematic reviews okay so it is a flow diagram kind of and there is you know when you talk about uh, the prisma flow diagram it it is it is uh, representing a screening process in in short if you want to understand yes mr vijay right right absolutely right if you want to understand prisma or you know it, it many a times it, it is complicated for many people just understand that it is a diagram it is a flow chart which summarizes the screening process now what do we do in screening process we know we see what we are going through what is in why it is included what is excluded why it is included excluded so what comes in why it is getting considered in systematic review what is not getting uh, considered why it is not getting considered so basically prisma flow diagrams it helps you to 
you know, first of all, get a quality of the review. Why? Because it is a very transparent process. Okay. And then also you as a scholar, you get, <clears throat> you get to assess that what are the strengths and the weaknesses of your review? That what kind of studies, whatever you have uh, considered to be included in re systematic review, then whether it is of qualitative nature or it is not. Okay. Now, something like this, your Prisma flow diagrams uh, looks like. Yes, absolutely, Mr. Vijay. It maps out the number of records identified. Absolutely fine. <clears throat> So uh, this is Prisma flow diagram that, uh, you know, how many databases you have identified, then how many are removed, how many uh, are screened for relevance, how many are removed, then they are eligible, then reasons for why they are removed. And then with that, the ones which are remaining with your uh, collection or with your with you, with the researcher, then you move ahead the synthesis with you. Okay. OK, so this is basically the uh, detailed explanation of uh, the Prisma flow diagrams that, you know, you use you, you search for, let's say, 97 and then, uh, you know, some uh, excluded were 28, why they were excluded, data were not proper or review methodology was improper, were not uh, you know, relevant to prop, uh, planning, probably language was not aligned. Language can also be, you know, language can also be, or probably sometimes you find a particular study, but that particular study only you get the abstract and you select it. The full text is not available. Then also it will not be, you know, considered. So basically Prisma flow diagrams helps you to come out with a complete pictorial representation of the number of records or number of databases which you have identified in your uh, you know uh, what do you say that uh, in your uh, systematic literature review okay <clears throat> this is again an example of the same one all right now we are coming to uh, Meta-analysis. Can anybody tell me what is a meta-analysis? Can anybody tell me what is a meta-analysis? Mr. Milton, yes, uh, in 2020 version, it is a more, uh, in 2020 version, it is a more elaborated one. It is, it is, it is built on the same platform. It is more, more on the, uh, you know, elaborated one, wherein you also explain the eligibility criteria. You also explain the total number of studies. You also explain the total, you know, which are, uh, uh, what, what is the kind of eligibility set criteria for each of the record. Okay. Yes. Yes, Mr. Halim. Miss. Yes, Miss Halima. You can. You can make a use for uh, this for scoping one. Okay. 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 Yes. So coming back to the meta analysis. So basically, when you talk about meta analysis, meta analysis, uh, you know, it is a statistical analysis. First of all, it is a statistical analysis wherein. Um, you know, large collection of analysis is being done. So now if you have got to know that in uh, a systematic review, we are coming up with uh, a lot of studies which gets, which then gets filtered out, which then gets, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> excluded or included. So absolutely right. So it is a kind of statistical analysis of, you know, uh, whatever, uh, <clears throat> individual studies they have collected so this meta-analysis basically it tells you that whatever is the systematical assessment of the results what you have get from the body of research what you're doing okay so basically if you want to understand that uh, it is it is uh, that uh, uh, method or this is it is that statistical analysis which gives you more precise results more precise approach towards the results okay yes absolutely right Nitya, that you know it analyzes the data which you have collected it gives you more 
precise approach it gives you more empirically correct approach okay so uh, what are the you know the results of the studies you have chosen what is the so basically it is it is kind of a uh, what do you say that you know a second umpire decision kind of this thing which you which we say in cricket similarly you know in uh, meta analysis uh, it is uh, it it basically helps you to uh, analyze the large collection of data which have resulted from the individual studies and now the purpose of this meta analysis is to absolutely right mr vikas the purpose of meta analysis is to you know interpret the findings that whatever findings uh, has been collected by the researcher for the uh, from the research uh, studies which he has she have collected so whatever the interpretation of those findings meta analysis serves the purpose to interpret them okay now let's look into the steps of meta analysis that what are the um, steps of meta analysis now there are four basically um, if you see that first is your define the research questions and literature review review literature so in that you know you begin with that uh, what are your research questions for example that the women who have used the oral contraceptives for 10 years or have a high risk of getting cervical cancer than women who have never used them so this is an example of a research question with which you know you are beginning up with your review okay this question recognizes cervical cancer as a result of intervention that you know long term contraceptive use and it describes the population so here the population is the women who have used the contraceptive for more than 10 years cervical cancer is the intervention it has been identified so all these criteria in terms of research questions you are looking for the literature now here you know you are only addressing the or you are only taking care of the studies which are more towards these research questions which is more you know addressing this research questions okay now coming to the next step that is select appropriate studies so here in the next step is once you have your research questions with you so you here you need to take the most appropriate the most closer studies so you need not to take the studies which are not talking about these interventions which you have taken the uh, sample which you have taken or the a uh, research idea or the research, research questions which you are taking only those ones which will be which are you know uh, fulfilling the criteria probably you know the population size or the population characteristics that will be you know uh, uh, included but don't go for the papers which you don't understand which are not clinical in nature see you you understand that you know the research question is clinical in nature so don't go for those papers which are not clinical studies which are just the review based studies which will not help you to contribute towards your study so just rule out them and move ahead with the remaining one which is which are more eligible okay then next is extract data now you have the information in terms of the studies with you it's time for you to extract the data you can mainly simple use your spreadsheet you can use you can use the tabular forms so it depends upon that you know what kind of information you have got on from the studies probably on the basis of the sample size what are the characteristics of these respondents which has been chosen what were the study duration probably some studies have been you know taken care over the month of 6 uh, uh, months or uh, uh, let's say you know 7 months so all these basis you choose the data or you extract the data okay then you analyze the data once you have analyzed the information what you would like to go for it and uh, what you like for um, choose then you go for the analysis of the data you can use different type of uh, uh, you know uh, plot diagrams which uh, can be used to analyze the data uh, in your meta analysis okay let's look into that okay 
now comes uh, i'll tell you that how you report the meta analysis it's come for the title of uh, <coughs> okay when you are writing a report or when you are writing a, a meta analysis what you need to focus on that you need to have a title you need to have uh, uh, abstract you need to have a um, introduction and then you need to have your uh, methods your results and discussions okay uh see when you are talking about miss madhuri when you are talking about you know conducting a meta analysis you know it is actually technically possible to do a meta analysis with only two studies also it is practically possible so uh, however you know you if you can say that uh, starts with the uh, uh, you know generally uh, more or less you know not less than 4 to 5 more than that more you know 4 to 5 studies are enough or more than that are enough to go for meta analysis however as less than 2 studies are also if uh, good enough to go for a meta analysis you know you can go ahead with the meta analysis okay so then you write this report most important factor here is writing the results now when you are analyzing the results when you are presenting the results how do you do that so you do that by uh, these kind of plots which can be like forest plots funnel plots bubbles and lab plots let's look into one by one each one of them now here is it uh, front of you it is uh, the forest plots basically the this kind of plots they tells you the total number of participants in the treatment and control groups control groups basically are those group or those group of uh, uh, yes i have told you mr abhay the sequence is of the report in the previous studies there is the sequence of the reports okay so basically it tells you this kind of plots are useful for uh, uh, you know it displays the effect of size estimates and it the confidence intervals the main a uh, uh, purpose of these kind of plots is to display the size estimates and the confidence intervals okay then comes the funnel plots basically uh, you know this is that tool which is used to assess the possibility of uh, publication uh, or you know a small kind of studies in you know in a meta analysis where the the uh, the size of the study or you know is uh, uh, relatively uh, small basically okay and it is basically the uh, it tells you the effect of an intervention whenever you are going for a study whenever you are going for a research uh, uh, study in which you are you know you are you are taking this study wherein you are willing to present the results or where you are uh analyzing the result with the help of funnel plots you need to make sure that there is a some sort of effect of an intervention on the chosen uh, guideline or the chosen topic okay then comes the uh, uh bubble plots here what is that you know you are trying to uh, look at the relationship between uh three variables basically you know you are choosing three variables now if for example if you can see there are three variable 3 8 so there are bubble plots are trying or bubble plots are way to explain or to represent or to analyze the data depicting the relationship between three variables okay then it is lab plot so it is one of the most commonly uh, used uh, display data in meta analysis wherein you are comparing okay wherein you are comparing the results results with interventions or results without interventions okay so uh, these uh, data visual graphs they helps you to know that what kind of results were there when interventions were used and what kind of results were there when interventions were not used okay <clears throat> now we'll be talking about the significance of meta analysis see first of all you have all um, uh, you know understood that uh, what is meta analysis how we go about it so meta analysis basically you know it helps to combine the data it can helps the researcher to combine some small small studies and you know how you can go ahead with the combining those small studies into a big one and you can also you know 
uh, predict or you can also come up with very accurate sort of results. Okay, very accurate sort of results you come up with when you are talking about the meta analysis. And also, meta analysis helps uh, you know to reduce the time because it, it is uh, conceptualizing or it's, it's consolidating the results of various studies and it is it is helping you to come up with a one single results of uh, you know which you have arised by combining the various small small studies okay so it spares your efforts now this is uh, what uh, somebody have asked also that what's the difference between systematic and uh, uh, meta-analysis systematic review and meta-analysis basically you know it is uh, when you talk about systematic reviews so it identifies the very critical or uh, research studies when you talk about uh, uh, meta-analysis there are protocols now when you talk about systematic reviews, there are also very protocol, uh, very uh, you know defined protocols. But in meta analysis, they are much more defined. Okay, much more defined. And uh, systematic reviews uh, talks about the variation that we are talking about heterogeneity. However, in meta analysis, we are talking, we are explaining that why this variation is there. So, in nutshell, if you want to understand. Meta-analysis tells the reasoning behind anything which is happening. It helps you to summarize the data statistically. Okay. Wherein systematic review, you are synthesizing the knowledge. Okay. In meta-analysis, you are statistically representing the results. You are coming up with the logical reasoning, research-oriented reasoning with the help of meta-analysis. Okay. All right, so that was all from um, our side for this webinar. And, you know, uh, one thing I would like to uh, tell uh, that uh, everybody that whosoever wants to get in touch with research graduate for all of their research queries, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us that because research graduate have all the uh, specialized people with themselves, uh, experts are there with us. So, you know, we can help you in all those research queries, research concerns, whatever doubt you have. If you are stuck at particular uh, position, if you are uh, not able to move ahead with a particular aspect of your research paper, so research graduate will be there to help you out. So thank you so much from my side. And it's been um, amazing to interact with all of you and i hope that whatever questions came in between i was able to answer them thank you so much thank you so much if anybody would like to ask about anything uh miss anupa we have conducted a webinar on uh, review papers as well and uh, if you would like to have this um, the uh, this uh, review paper webinar once again i would say that you know you can come up with uh, you can come to us and you can get into with us us stating your queries we can plan such uh, uh, webinar once again that uh, you know your contact for research graduate is uh, there in these slides the web uh, the email id the uh, website detail and the contact number also everything is there Thank you so much, Mr. Iran. Thank you so very much. Everything is there in the slides. Don't you worry. You will get the presentation. You will get the details of research graduate, and and you know you can you can be rest assured that uh, whatever queries you have, uh, whatever doubts you have with research, we are there for you. And uh, we have the previous webinars. And uh, like for example, somebody said that you know they want a review paper. A webinar we can conduct in future also however there are published already and whatever queries you have uh, uh, related to whatever webinars you would like us to conduct in future uh, thank you mr imran thank you so much that i'm able to uh, you know contribute a little bit in your knowledge so whatever queries you have whatever uh, <clears throat> uh, information you would like us to deliver with the help of these webinar i can um, assure you that you can get in touch with research graduate graduate and we will deliver that okay okay 
Yes, it depends upon it depends upon um, your inclusion and exclusion criteria. It's been um, amazing that you know you guys interact or uh, you keep asking or keep sharing. I think say I I should say that keep sharing uh, the questions in between and I also like it too. Uh, Mr. Vijay, um, uh, you can get in touch with, to me with the research graduate and um, you know we can get yeah, definitely I'll help you to write one. Okay, because every every uh, uh, detail to contact uh, No, we can, Mr. Bursi, we can, uh, we need to, you know, sampling size is one of your inclusion or exclusion criteria. As like said, Mr. Ma Ms. Madhuri said uh, that uh, what sample size or what kind of sample size you would like with your uh, review studies to be included or excluded, that is your inclusion or exclusion criteria. Yes, Mr. Bursi, you need to predefine the sample size before. Yes, you need to. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for attending. And uh, thank you so much for a wonderful interactive audience. And we shall see each other in the uh, next series of webinars. I expect and I, I will appreciate your duly presence there. If anybody wants to get in touch with a research graduate, I would appreciate, please do that so that because you know it's it's not to help yourself. So get in touch with the expert people. It, it's uh, it's about getting in touch with people with the like-minded approach. Okay. Thank you so much to all of you who have joined us from um, outside India as well. And many thanks for, the, for them who have joined us from different parts of India. Um, it feels wonderful that to connect with you. And otherwise, it gets very difficult because I don't know who, you know, where are you from. But... With such platforms, it gets easy for us to interact and to get in touch with like-minded people. Okay. So thank you so much for attending. Thank you very much. We shall see in the next series of webinars. Thank you so much. Thank you.